Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to thank God for once again this Saturday evening or night. He has gathered together his saints. Hallelujah. We acknowledge God and we thank God in our midst who is here, the Holy Spirit, who is leading us. And let us see, let us hear what he wants to speak to us tonight. So let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Second Corinthians and chapter number 10. Let's read from verse number 1. Uh, now I, Paul, myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. As if we walk according to the flesh. Now listen to me. I told you many times about the church of Corinthians who were weak in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. But they were mighty in the knowledge of the world and the wisdom that the world gives them. They thought of them highly, but actually in the eyes of God, spiritually they were babes and they were babies in the eyes of God. Okay, hallelujah. Now Paul, what he is doing here is he is trying to, he is trying to make a point because these people, you know, people who are carnal minded, people who are of the flesh, will never be able to understand the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. The things of the spirit and spiritual people are like foolish, foolishness to these carnal Christians, to these Christians who walk according to the flesh. And these carnal Christians and these foolish Christians who are in the flesh, because carnal mind is an enmity with God. We will come to that at a later point. Okay. And these carnal Christians boast and think that they are the one who are worshipping but but you cannot worship God and follow God and have the walk in the word of God with a carnal mind with a fleshy mind so the carnal mind is always a enemy of God's word a enemy of God's spirit the carnal mind so this church of Corinthians were carnally minded and uh, anyone who is carnally minded will be a enemy of those who are spiritually minded. There will be contradiction in both of those categories. Are we together? Are we understanding until now? Listen to me. So, Apostle Paul is speaking to some carnal Christians and making them understand his ministry and his call is not of the flesh but of the spirit. And he is making them understand. That's why he is talking like that to them. And he is saying that, you know, you guys think that I am lowly when I am with you and I am very bold when I am absent from you in, in the letters that I write to you. But I intend not to be bold when I come among you because many of you think that we also walk according to the flesh. We But, but we do not walk according to the flesh nor do we war according to the flesh. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? So let's go ahead. Verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Here starts our topic. Though we walk in the flesh, what? We do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. Hallelujah. But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Paul was the one who laid the foundation of the church, which is in Corinth. He was the one who preached the gospel to the to the people of Corinthians and laid the foundation of the church in Corinth. Hallelujah. Now the the calling, the nature of the calling of Paul was he was the master builder. He was the layer of foundation of churches, of the churches of Jesus Christ in every place. Why? Because Paul was called in the original state 
uh, Paul, Paul was called in in a thing that he used to work in like he was he was a tent maker he was a tent maker before he came to Christ hallelujah and so the calling that he had in Jesus Christ was was tent making making the tents making the church and be becoming the master builder the, Bi the Bible says that Apostle Paul says the Lord has made me a master builder uh, any which ways uh, you see Peter Peter was an evangelical apostle he went to the house of Cornelius and he preached the gospel and so many people came to Christ wherever he went he won souls for the kingdom he won souls for Jesus Christ why because when Jesus came to him Peter was catching fishes so originally when Jesus appeared to them whatever they were doing in like manner they were they were assigned the similar kind of work in the kingdom when John encountered Jesus John that uh, the sons of Zebedee John James and John were mending the nets the Bible says they were mending the net, nets so the calling of John in the body of Christ was mending the church that's why he writes the book of Revelation warnings to the churches and all those things and revealing what is going to happen mending the church preparing the church hallelujah are we together so that is the nature uh, you will be called in the things when Jesus appeared to you whatever you are doing the, the calling will be similar to where you were called when I was called by Jesus Christ I was in the merchant navy thinking of going to several nations on the ship and earning a lot of money I did not understood at that time but later after many years I understood that God has called me for the nations okay any which ways that is not our topic but Paul was the person who laid the foundation of churches okay who laid the foundation of churches he was the master builder so he is he was the first who came to Corinth and started to preach the gospel to them you see that and the church of Corinth even after be, even after receiving the gospel from Paul and after so many years they are not understanding the ministry of Paul and Paul has to explain his ministry he is trying to tell them our walk though we walk in the flesh we are not war doing war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds now that is the word strongholds strongholds that is our topic tonight strongholds everyone says strongholds what are the strongholds verse number five casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ now Paul is talking about the strongholds set up in the minds of the people in the church of Corinth okay what he is saying is you know when I am preaching I am not fighting demons when I am preaching there is a fight that I am doing when I am preaching the word I am not fighting demons I am fighting the strongholds in the minds of people who are listening to me because there are strongholds in the minds of people hallelujah are we are we together okay 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 if you don't believe that we will we will go ahead stay with me Paul is saying that I am not warring according to the flesh you don't even know you are thinking in the flesh and you are thinking everything in the flesh but my war I know what I am doing I am doing a war not according to the flesh but in the spirit and my weapon is not carnal it's not a physical weapon it's a weapon that is unseen it's a weapon of the spirit that is mighty in God to do what to pull down stronghold and the stronghold he is referring to he is referring to a stronghold that is set up in the minds of the people in Corinth a stronghold in their minds a stronghold in the minds hallelujah are we together should we start tonight okay let us start tonight what is a stronghold so we will first of all not go deep into 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 about the strongholds we will go into that at a later part but first of all we have to understand what is a stronghold and the stronghold I am talking about is a spiritual stronghold what is a stronghold a stronghold is a place of covered safety and security 
a stronghold is a place of covered safety and security hallelujah you know on whatsapp we they have something called as end to end encryption end to end encryption that means they say that whenever you send if i send a message to k only i know it and k know it there is a end to end encryption that secures and covers that message and they say that scammers cannot tap into it it's a covered transaction is a secured transaction whenever you do transactions through your credit card uh, online you buy something on amazon or whatever sites are you put you, you know you put your credit card details and you pay through your credit card and they say it's a secured transaction it's a covered transaction a third party cannot enter in that transaction are we together you are entering the details you know the details and the company that gets the details they cannot give it to a third party that's a covered transaction a secured transaction so stronghold is a place of covered safety and security okay as simple as that we have to realize second point is the stronghold is a brain of a system the stronghold is the brain of the system because of which the system is in place and and is functional and it stands together the stronghold is what it is the brain of the system because of which the system the whole system is standing in place it is functioning properly and it is standing standing uh, and it has to do what it has to do because the stronghold the brain is in place are we together do you know goliath is a stronghold do you know goliath was a stronghold the army of the philistines were sitting on the stones like this and uh, and they were drinking and eating they did not have to work much because the stronghold was in place that was goliath because of whose words israel was already getting paralyzed hallelujah but the bible says when david defeated goliath all the army of the philistines the army people started to flee away because the brain of a system was pulled down the brain of a system was pulled down are we together are we understanding what is a stronghold okay stronghold is also a fortress you know a fortress like the city of jericho you know the walls of jericho joshua and his army uh carried out a spiritual stat strategy and the bible says so clearly that when they shouted at the trumpet sound the walls fell down flat and they entered by the way for your information do you know the house of rehab was in the wall of jericho jericho i don't have time to go to the scripture but you will find that in the book of joshua chapter number 2 the house of rehab was in the wall of jericho that means there was a four bedroom hall kitchen or three bedroom hall kitchen because she had a huge family her mother her brothers she used to live with them so listen to me a four bedroom hall kitchen or or a five bedroom because she had a huge family considering that she had a very big house and that five bedroom four bedroom house was inside the wall of jericho that means the wall of jericho was so thick that a huge house can be placed inside the wall of jericho it was so thick that's why in the ancient times it was impossible to defeat jericho because the city of jericho was inside a stronghold inside a place which was safe and secure with the walls of jericho are we are we understanding until now the city of jericho it was impossible for anyone no one dared to come against jericho because if he they have to defeat jericho they have to go through the walls and it's impossible to go through the walls because the walls are so thick that a five bedroom hall kitchen can be placed inside the wall when the walls fell down when they shouted the whole wall fell down but as per history and as per the archaeologists the part where rehab's house was that part of the wall did not fall down so the people of israel uh, got into 
द सिटी ऑफ जेरिको फ्रॉम ऑल द वेज फ्रॉम वेयर द वॉल फेल डाउन बट द पार्ट वेयर रिहैब हाउस वॉज इट वॉज ऑन द नॉर्दर्न साइड एज पर हिस्ट्री नॉर्दर्न साइड ऑफ नॉर्थ साइड ऑफ द ऑफ द सिटी ऑफ जेरिको द हाउस ऑफ रिहैब सो दैट पार्ट डिड नॉट फॉल डाउन यू नो वाई बिकॉज द ब्लड वॉज अप्लाइड ऑन दैट वॉल द ब्लड द स्कॉलेट कॉड ओके दैट इज द रेवल्यूशन ऑफ द ब्लड एंड विच वेज हाल ए लोया दैट इफ द डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड द ब्रैथ ऑफ गॉड कम्स अपॉन अ सिटी बट इफ द ब्लड इज ओवर योर हाउस एंड यू आर इन द जूरिस्टिक्शन ऑफ द ब्लड ऑफ जीजस क्राइस्ट नथिंग विल हैपन टू योर हाउस हाल ए लोया एनी विच वेज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ स्ट्रॉन्ग गोल सो द स्ट्रॉन्ग गोल इज अ फोर्ट्रेस जेरिको वॉज अ फोर्ट्रेस it was impossible people of god it was impossible to get into jericho if you want to destroy jericho so no one dared to destroy jericho but god revealed a strate- strategy to his people israel hmm? hallelujah and they at the sound of the trumpet they saw, they shouted and the walls fell down flat and they entered jericho that is what is apostle paul is talking about in the book of second corinthians chapter number 10 He is talking about a weapon that is mighty in God to pull down strongholds. To pull down strongholds. Are we together? But this stronghold is not a city. Is not a physical city. This stronghold is in the minds of people. Hallelujah. So, what did I say? A stronghold is a covered place of safety and security. No one can enter inside. If a place is surrounded by stronghold, if a bunch of people are in the stronghold, that's why the Bible says, "Lord, the Lord is my refuge." and he is my what psalms i think it's in it's in psalm chapter number 999 let let me take you to that verse psalm chapter number 9 i think so <clears throat> yes psalm chapter number 9 the lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble Hallelujah. So okay, I think in other other version it talks about this verse talks about a fortress. Any which ways the Bible talks about the Lord being our fortress, our stronghold, our strong tower. When we are in trouble, we run into Him. Okay, Hallelujah. Let me show you another verse. I think it's in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter number two. Zechariah chapter number two, verse number five. Zechariah chapter number 2 verse number 5 For I for I says the Lord will be a wall of fire all around her and I will be the glory in her midst Oh hallelujah the Lord will be a wall of fire all around his people The Lord will be a stronghold for his people You see that a place of safety and security the Lord will be a wall of fire all around Jerusalem Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. And the people who dwell in it in the in the walls inside the Lord surrounded with the walls of fire that is the Lord will play, will dwell safely and securely inside the stronghold. So that is how so that the, the Lord is a stronghold for those who come to him. Okay? He is a he provides them a covered place of safety and security. That is what I saw. told you the point number 1 point number 2 i told you the stronghold is a brain is the brain of a system because of which everything is in place the stronghold is the brain of the system like goliath was a stronghold spiritually of the of the philistines let me take you now let's go to matthew's chapter number 12 matthew's chapter number 12 and verse number 29 verse number 29 or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house this is jesus speaking how can one plunder or take over the house of a strong man unless that person first binds the strong man if the strong man is bound 
everything can be captured everything can be captured so the strong man is signifying as the stronghold of the house the brain of the house the main source of power that is governing the house and jesus is saying the way we are defeating and taking over the house taking over the goods of the sister and plundering the goods of the strong man is first we have to bind what the strong man you you fight against the system you fight against the demons of the system you try to destroy the house you try to take over the house you try to take over their goods or plunder their goods it cannot happen unless you first come against the brain of the system that is the stronghold okay are we understanding jesus is saying that we need to bind the strong man that we need to come against the stronghold we need to come against the stronghold okay spiritually so let us come to the stronghold in human beings let us come to the stronghold in us in human beings you know what is the stronghold in a man the stronghold of a man is his mind write it down the stronghold of a person is what his mind now now the bible sometimes speaks about the heart of a person when it is saying the heart of the person it is talking about a part in the being of a person where thoughts originate where the person thinks that means it is speaking about the mind when it is talking in in words and it is referring heart it is talking about the mind now you have to understand the mind is the stronghold of a man and the devil knows that very well very well the devil knows that if he can defeat you in your mind you will stay defeated the devil knows that if you can if he can if he can defeat you in your mind you will stay defeated if he can make you believe that you are a loser in your mind you will stay a loser the devil knows very well that whatever he can make your mind believe in you will be the same person the devil knows very well do you know gideon had a stronghold in his mind and the lord had to de deal with that stronghold the angel of the lord came to gideon and said you mighty man of valor now god is communicating to gideon his true identity but gideon is saying how is that possible i am the least in the tribes i am the least in my family it's not possible but as per god what is gideon a mighty man of valor so when there is a stronghold operating in your mind when there is a stronghold of the enemy operating in the in your mind you will be unaware of your true identity in christ you don't know what you are in christ you know what you don't know what is your potential you don't know what you are supposed to do you are just believing i am the least i am small i am a loser and you think you are humble no that is not humility you have a stronghold brother in your mind oh i cannot preach like you brother i want to stay low i want to stay humble i cannot do anything in the kingdom of god brother there is a stronghold brother sister in your mind that's why you speak gideon was speaking like that and then when the angel was was communicating he was you know what is the conversation we will not go into that and that stronghold was in his mind because of the evidence of the altars of baal in his household because of the altar of baal it was a stronghold placed by baal in the mind of gideon if you are a man of god god knows you are a mighty man of valor but you do, you yourself don't believe it you know why you don't believe it because you have believed in a lie which has become a stronghold in your mind you don't believe your what god has called you to be a stronghold are we understanding proverbs 23 verse 7 what it says as a man thinks in his heart so is he the heart is mind i told you as you think in your mind so are you that means do you agree with me that the mind is the stronghold of a human 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 being the 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 stronghold of our being is not our heart is not our hands not nothing else but the mind but the mind hallelujah and that is where the devil forms his fortress the devil is forming a fortress in the minds of people in the minds of people we will come to that hallelujah many people have believed in a lie and they continue to believe in a lie you know what you are doing is 
you are giving place in your mind to the lies of the enemy to the lies of the enemy and the more in other words i mean to say in your mind you are giving place to demons the demons are not sitting and drinking coca cola in your mind what they are doing is they are they are they are carrying out a construction work in your mind of building walls hallelujah the demons are not resting in your mind they are not sitting and watching the tv that you are watching they are busy in your mind building walls those are the strongholds hallelujah are we understanding people are we understanding so if you try to convince a person who has a stronghold set up in his mind already you convince him but he will not be convinced you try to teach him you try to give him the word you try to show him and make logic make sense to him he will not believe you he will not understand you he if you see a person who is stuck to his thought patterns he just wants to believe what he he is believing from 20 years and he he is like a narrow minded person he just 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 does not wants to adjust his thoughts and be a little open minded and accept what you are telling him a person if he is is stuck is stuck to his own thought patterns understand that there is a stronghold in his mind the stronghold needs to be broken you don't need to preach to him you need to use the weapon that is mighty in god to pull down strongholds to pull down strongholds hallelujah are we understanding listen to me listen to me now so what what did i say the stronghold of a human being is his mind is his mind now this it's it's not that this revelation is only with me this revelation is been used by a lot of unbelievers also by a lot of fake pastors and false preachers and what they will teach you is your mind has the power to change your life think positive always always uh, look at what god says about you you are not a sinner you are a good person you are the child of god you are beautifully made you are wonderfully made you are this you are that you will be successful you will have a i will have a lot of money positive thinking positive thinking now that is again a construction of a demonic stronghold in the mind because that is not what god intends your mind uh, god intends that your mind should be used in are we understanding there are many unbelievers who will write, who have written books the, and the title of the books are, is the power of your mind am i right am i right continue to think if you are going for a job interview i was hearing a interview of a cricketer who plays cricket he, he is a very famous cricketer and indian cricketer the the most famous and the most highly rated batsman in the indian team hallelujah and he was given a, giving an interview because you know the australian te- team and the australian pitches are the most dangerous pitches and the most dangerous team in the cricket kingdom but the indian team dominates the australian team so this people were taking an interview of this batsman and asking him asking him how do you dominate this dangerous team of australia and you know what he was saying he was saying that before i go to play the a, a day previous to my my um, the my match day i imagine that i am i am whacking the bowlers of australia with six and fours i imagine that i am dominating them i imagine i imagine i imagine i imagine and when i go go on the pitch what i imagine i bring into reality it is the power of my mind that i use yes ah hallelujah so listen to me listen to me the revelation of the mind the revelation of the mind can be used by worldly people is used by worldly people pagans new age mystic people and they call it positive thinking they call it call it po- positive thinking people train their mind listen to me what they do is they train their mind by constant imaginations and thoughts of success they train their mind by constant imaginations and thoughts of success which makes them in turn a victim of the devil 
yes they are successful in what they are doing in in a portion in a limit because they are imagining and using the power of the mind but still they are becoming a victim to the devil because by doing so what is happening to them is they are they are believing and practicing a self centered ideology where they them, where they themselves start to consider themselves as their god that they have the power to change their life aha uh -huh. and it is it is still a thing of the flesh i want to differentiate with what what this fake pastors are preaching you and what these people are preaching you about the power of mind and i want to differen differentiate that revelation of your of mind to what the holy spirit is teaching the church about the mind of a man that's why i am coming to this point are we understanding people you might imagine tomorrow you are going for a interview and lord you imagine all the verses you yourself are putting all the verses in your mind i will pass the interview the lord will give me success promotion does not come from the east from the west but it comes from the lord ah uh, you you are filling yourself because your pastor said imagine imagine that you are going to win imagine that you are going to pass the interview imagine imagine fill your word fill your mind with your word fill your mind what will start to happen is you are not depending on the spirit of god you are depending on the power of your mind and your mind is becoming a god to you it is a self centered theolo theology that did not come from the holy spirit but it came from the human spirit it's a human wisdom hallelujah i don't have time to take you into human wisdom but because many revelations can come out of your human spirit you know what is a human spirit who is the first person who attained the wisdom of the human spirit do you know that it was eve it was eve remember that in in the, in the book of genesis she was the one who first ate the fruit and the spirit of god left her human spirit and the wisdom that originated in the mind of eve was the human wisdom independent of the wisdom of god it can discern by itself what is good and bad it can generate a power and a result of itself eve and then the second person was adam then she gave the fruit to adam you see that are we, are, are we understanding people of god what i am saying this power of the mind thing and imagine things and it's it's it, it has come from that human spirit it's a wisdom of the human spirit and it is sensual and demonic because the day these people who are using the power of the mind the day the sudden calamity of god falls upon the earth their imaginations will not help them that day because the power of the mind is limited yeah the power of positive thinking it is limited the day a judgment comes from god over the face of the earth over them their mind cannot protect them that day and all their skills of yoga and using the power of their mind will not save them hallelujah because the the practice that they are practicing is from the human spirit it's a sensual demonic human wisdom are we understanding are we understanding hallelujah what you have to understand is what christians need to have what christians need to discover is not the power of your mind christians actually need to have a spiritual mind under write it down what do you need to have a spiritual mind stay with me okay i will come to the scriptures to explain you that we cannot use our own imaginations oh i am i am going to win i am going to have a big ministry i am imagining i am imagining no 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 that is not why what i have to do what i have to do is i have to leave my mind in the hands of god and think what god is thinking that is a spiritual mind i am thinking what jesus is thinking i am thinking what the holy spirit is making me think are you understanding the difference i am not imagining success i am not in, i want to be this i want to be this so i i imagine i will be this i will be this they are using the revelation of the human mind in a human by the human way by a demonic way which is beneficial to be successful in what they want to do 
बट इट इज इट 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 इज जीरो परसेंट बेनिफिशियल वेन इट कम्स टू द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड अ क्रिश्चन इज नॉट सपोज टू डिस्कवर द पावर ऑफ योर योर माइंड वॉट यू आर सपोज टू डिस्कवर वॉट वॉट यू आर सपोज टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड हैव इज अ स्पिरिचुअल माइंड दैट यू थिंक वॉट गॉड इज थिंकिंग you are supposed to have a spiritual mind a mind that is surrender to god and to his word and you are thinking and being led in your mind as the holy spirit is leading you okay let me read that out to you a mind that a christian should have is a spiritual mind first of all where we do not do not use the determination which is which is uh, which is the use of our mind as a stronghold of our being but let the spirit of god become the stronghold that governs and leads our whole being that means you are not thinking but you are letting the holy spirit to think and give you the thoughts and to lead you yes that is a spiritual mind are we understanding i am just coming we have not come to the main topic of strongholds i am trying to explain you that first of all i told you the mind of a man is the stronghold of the being of a man <clears throat> whatever you think in the mind you it will happen whatever you think in the mind it will happen and the devil i told you the devil targets the mind because if he can defeat you in the mind he knows you will stay defeated the other part of it is people to overcome that people to overcome negative th- thoughts they read books like power of mind and all those but still they are defeated they are under the spell of the enemy because what you are doing is you are trying to make your mind the god of your life your selfish desires the god of your life by putting it in your mind imagining the selfish desires okay that that is not what god wants you to be and that is not how god wants you to function what god wants you to have is a spiritual mind everyone say a spiritual mind now let's go to romans chapter number 8 <coughs> Romans chapter number 8 The next thing about the mind I want to say is the mind is the neutral link of our being Everyone say the mind is the neutral link of our being Romans chapter number 8 verse number 5 Yes yes <coughs> Amen So Romans 8 verse 5 For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit the mind is the neutral link if you are in the flesh you are carnal you are demonic if you are in the spirit your spirit which is joined with the spirit of god you are walking in the things of god you are bra- bearing the fruits of fruit of god that is the fruit of the spirit you are operating in the way of god so flesh and spirit are defined by themselves but the mind cannot be defined because the mind is the neutral link the mind has its own will the mind can choose should i set my mind on the things of the flesh or the mind can also set itself on the things of the spirit are you understanding that's why the mind is the neutral link That's why the Bible says do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of the world but be transformed by what by the renewal of your mind by the renewal of your mind what what the Bible is explaining there is you have to set your mind on the things of the holy spirit on the things of the spirit not on the things of the flesh nor on the things of human wisdom or human knowledge but explicitly on the things of the spirit hallelujah amen so the mind mind is the is the is the neutral party like a pastor who came to your house because you and your husband had a conflict and uh, you are not able to solve the conflict you have your part of your story your husband has the part of his story you are saying my husband is doing this 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 that's why i i got angry i cannot stay with him and the husband has his part of the story and the husband is saying the wife is she is doing all these things you know i think she is wrong i am not wrong so you you are justified in your own own opinions your husband is justified in your in his own opinion and i come to your house and i hear both of you 
and I become a neutral link. I am not on your side. I am not on your husband's side. I take whatever you both of you say, and I make a decision. I said you are not completely right, and you are also not completely right. I am in the middle. I am a neutral link. Are you understanding? The mind is a neutral link. That's why sometimes the mind can be led by the spirit, and sometimes the mind can be led by flesh because it is the neutral link. Are we understanding? Sometimes you may say something that that is from the spirit of God, and after two minutes you may say something that came out of the flesh. Hallelujah! <coughs> you know Matthew chapter number sixteen. Jesus said, "Who am I? Who do you think I am?" And Peter said there that that uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus told him, "Flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my Father who is in heaven." That means. he spoke something that came in his mind through the spirit but after few verses if you read that this same peter started to rebuke jesus jesus you cannot go on the cross and jesus said get behind me satan so few minutes before that he was talking something from the spirit and few minutes after that he was talking something of the flesh because he your mind can be influenced by both the sides your mind is the neutral link it can be influenced by both the sides are you understanding so you have to train your mind to focus and to lean on the things of the spirit and not not on the things of the flesh are we together people are you understanding tonight what i what we are learning <coughs> okay amen listen to me so verse number 5 says for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be the carnal mind is never subject to the law of god no indeed can be you know the power of mind and positive thinking you know what is that that is a carnal mind and it is not subject to the law of god though you are thinking and you are getting success but what is happening in your life is not as per the will of the spirit of god not as per the will of god the carnal mind is never subject to the law of god do you know there are different types of mind there is the carnal mind there is the spiritual mind there is the anxious mind in philippians 4 6 in romans chapter number 1 there is the debased mind there are different types of mindsets hallelujah and the carnal mindset is the mindset which is the which is the main mindset under which the debased mindset also comes in under which the anxious mindset also comes in the carnal mind is the mind where the demons have did the construction work with their cement and with their bricks and they have built a wall aha uh-huh. they have built a wall and the walls have become so thick like the walls of jericho even the word of god comes like a like a arrow but the walls are not letting the word of god penetrate inside the person's mind because it is surrounded by a wall it is surrounded by a wall hallelujah are we understanding i don't have time to take you into the types of mindset i don't have time to take you into the characteristics of a carnal mind okay i have a service after this so i will preach for more 15 20 minutes and cover the topic of the strongholds <clears throat> but there are different types of mindset and there are characteristics of the carnal mind which is an enmity with god but to be spiritually minded is what life and peace what is a spiritual mind a spiritual mind is not governed by the human spirit is not governed by your desires is not governed by oh i want to get successful and my pastor said imagine that you are successful read all the verses related to that you will get success the pastor is not leading that person to discover the will of god first and whether what you are doing is in the will of god or not the pastor is not ah hallelujah the pastor is not teaching the person to depend on god the foundation of a christian life is a that the christian is a helpless being fully dependent on god fully completely dependent on dependent on god 
you cannot do anything with positive thinking in the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. That is not the wisdom that comes from the spirit. You say, Lord, I cannot do this. Every time I come here to sit to preach the word, though the Lord has spoken to me, but I tell the Lord, I cannot do this. You need to help me, Holy Spirit. Speak through me, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. Though I have preached a lot of sermons, but I tell every time I come on this pulpit, I say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. I cannot do it. That sense of dependability, that sense that I cannot do it, that is, that is the spiritual mind. That means the mind is surrendered to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will lead the mind. The Holy Spirit will give you scriptures. Hallelujah. Are we understanding this? Are we understanding this? Am I able to expose the demonic doctrine where they preach, discover the power of your mind? Don't, don't learn that doctrine. Don't read those books. You will become a self-centered Christian. Detached from the will of God. Yes. Hallelujah. A, a book will not help you attain what God has for you. What will help you is the Holy Spirit. He will help you and the word of God will help you. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that. Hallelujah. You are a Christian. You are a spirit-filled Christian. Even in your business, even in your work. The things that the Bible and the Holy Spirit will tell you, the mysteries will help you in your business, in your work, more than any sensual topics or secular books will help you. Are we understanding? Hallelujah! 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 The spiritual mind, we cannot do anything. You know, I heard a, I heard a real story. There was a person, a young man, his father never slept in the night. When it was night, he was never in the house. He came in the house every morning because and he discovered that his father was the Grand Master, the High Priest in an occultic shrine, in an occultic altar. And his father used to go every night from night until morning. He used to go at that demonic altar. And you know what he used to do? He used to tell that spirit, I don't have eyes. Give me eyes. I don't have ears. Give me ears. I don't have mouth. Give me mouth. I don't have hands. Give me hands. From, from night until the rising of the sun, he will keep on telling that to the spirit. Keep on telling that to the spirit. Hallelujah. You see that occultic grandmaster you Christians will go wherever you go. I, I know I will be successful. You will depend on positive thinking. But this occultic masters know how incapable they are. And that's why they are overpowering churches and Christians. Christians have to realize that you are nothing without Jesus. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You can bear no fruits apart from me. Your mind has to be surrendered, surrendered to God. You have to say, I cannot think, Lord, you have to think through me. I cannot. Yes, what he was doing is a law of the spirit. When you do that, the Holy Spirit will become your eyes. The Holy Spirit will become your mind. Oh my, hallelujah. What you will think is what God is thinking. What you will say is what God is saying. A spirit-led mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. 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 So let us come to the strongholds. I, I, I am not going to cover the types of mind, but maybe someday, some other day we will cover that. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. And so we were reading that in the beginning. <coughs> so here we are about the revelation of the stronghold. So, Paul started off in verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So, Paul is saying, My weapon is not carnal, but mighty in God to pull down what? Strongholds. You people of, of, of the church of Corinth, the strongholds that are there in your mind, what are the strongholds in the mind now? What are the strongholds in the mind? If, the, if, if a lie, if a demonic spirit stays long in your mind, 
He is not there to eat and drink in your mind. He is there. He is constructing walls. He is constructing a fortress. He is constructing a stronghold. That first of all, the stronghold he is constructing is a spiritual programming. Is a spiritual programming that he is doing in his mind, in your mind. Hallelujah. A spiritual programming. You know what is a spiritual programming? Okay, let me explain. A software in engineer does not has to be available at the site always. What he does is the software engineer goes to that site and does the programming to all the computers in that office. He installs a program, a software. Okay, and he does not has to be available. Once he has programmed the computer systems, the CPUs, which are the brain of the computer, with the server. Once he has programmed everything, he will just leave. and what and the computers will function according to the software program he does not has to be available okay hallelujah so if we if i am doing deliverance and i cast out the demon of that person and the demon also goes out of the person oh i am going out and the demon goes out of the person okay but even after the demon goes out of that person the person is in the same state why because the, till the time the demon was in the person the demon did a spiritual programming in the mind the walls are constructed and as per that stronghold the person is still is still thinking like that because of the ev evidence of stronghold so i told you deliverance ministry is not casting out demons yes you can cast out the demon but the person how many innumerable christians you see on your television innumerable christians where the pastor is oh come come give your testimony go and see what happens to them afterwards go and see just go and see is their life changed you know that right their life is not changed and transformed because deliverance is not when a demon goes goes out of you deliverance is when the stronghold in your mind is pulled down the spiritual progr programming has been destroyed hallelujah Oh I see so many people in the church they hear a sermon brother rahul today oh i felt something leave me and i will not go go drinking alcohol again i will not smoke again i will not do all these things i will i was doing all those things and the next day again they find themselves doing all those things again because it was a emotional experience they had in themselves the strongholds were not destroyed so many people pastors counsel you know you have to come to the church and the person nods their head yeah yeah pastor i will do this i will not do this i will not do this i will come to the church i will be in the fellowship of god's people and sunday goes and monday they are the same person again and again they are missing in the church because there is a stronghold that has been constructed in the mind there is a spiritual programming there is a thought pattern they are sticking to and they are not able to come out of it because the demons have constructed walls in their mind so what did i say the stronghold a stronghold is a spiritual programming in the mind of a person that will keep the person away from god and against god so let us read what does the stronghold consist of in verse number 5 verse number 5 second corinthians chapter 10 verse number 5 casting down arguments he is talking about pulling down strongholds what are the elements of the strongholds what are, what is it casting down arguments everyone say arguments and arguments. yes and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of god arguments against god and high things high things i will come to that high things against the knowledge of god so there are two elements here first is what arguments second are high things and then bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ so what paul is speaking is there are two elements of the strongholds that is arguments and second is high things once both of them are casted down the thoughts can be brought into captivity to the obedience of christ are you understanding now what does arguments signify arguments signify the walls of the stronghold walls of the strong walls of the stronghold okay arguments signify walls what the walls of the stronghold what does high things signify 
high things signify the strength and the height of the walls high things high things signify what the strength and the height of the walls of the stronghold once the strength of the walls is nullified and the arguments are casted down the walls will break then the thoughts of a man can be brought out and taken to the obedience of christ are you understanding this the scripture okay now what did i say first of all arguments are walls what are arguments arguments are contradictions of your thoughts against the thoughts of god arguments are contradictions are contradictions of your thoughts against the thoughts of god for example gideon the angel came and told gideon gideon you are a mighty man of valor but gideon said i am the least in the tribes of israel my family is the least in this tribe and i am the least in my family so that was a wall erected that is a wall the wall is gideon does not believes what god believes for him that is a wall a contradiction of something that god has for you a contradiction of something is which is a identity identity that god gave you okay are we understanding that thing okay those are the walls so a person when you you when you see that person having a thought process which is completely in contradiction to the spirit of god and to the word of god there are walls in his mind there are walls in his mind and you are going on preaching you also casted out two three demons that day and in the second second time he came to your church you casted out more demons but the person is thinking in the same way because the person in his mind is having walls those are contradictions against what god says to him or what is in the word of god are we understanding secondly what are high things listen to me carefully what did i say is high things high things is the strength of that wall is the height of the wall the higher the walls are the difficult it is for you to climb and go inside so climbing and going inside is not the option you cannot go climb on the walls and go inside and take one thought and again come out and take it to christ no the formula to do it is break down the walls so every thought can be every thought of that person can be captured and the person can be brought in obedience to jesus christ that is what i was saying in the beginning of my sermon when i am preaching i am not fighting demons i am fighting the strongholds in the minds of people a anointed servant of god appointed by god a prophet of god a anointed teacher of god when he speaks his teachings will will pull down strongholds in the minds of people and transform their lives and that's why i say that deliverance ministry is a anointed teaching ministry not casting out demons casting out demons do not deliver people ah, hallelujah are we understanding so what did i say the high things are the strength and the height of the walls and what are those things those are convictions and habitual embedded theologies and ideas that people never want to give up that is the strength of the wall what is that convictions and habitual embedded ideas and theologies that people never want to give up listen to me listen to me now stay with me very carefully what i am telling you for example for example a person liver is degrading and the person drinks alcohol and he goes to the doctor he goes to the doctor okay and the doctor tells him you have to reduce your intake of alcohol how how often you are drinking and the person says i am drinking alcohol every day so the doctor tells him you have to reduce your intake of alcohol and drink it occasionally not every day because the doctor as per his analysis he thinks that if he takes the medicines and treatment and do, does not drinks frequently his liver can be healed okay after 6 months of observation the person now does not drinks he obeyed the doctor okay he obeyed the doctor so there was a con he was not able, he was not ready to obey but he obeyed the doctor because if he does not obey he will die 
so the contra so so there was a force on his walls a thing that he was doing contrary to against his body he stopped doing it okay but there was there was a force against the wall but the walls did not break completely few cracks developed in the wall and after 6 months stay with me i am giving you example to explain this after 6 months he comes to the doctor and the liver problem has grown more worse and now the doctor tells him my dear friend you need to give up alcohol completely completely if you want to survive but this person says oh no i can't do that because it was a habitual embedded habit in his life that he does not wants to give up that is the strength of the wall he does not wants to give up completely alcohol he, because he says i can die but i cannot live without alcohol are you understanding are you understanding okay listen to me listen to me what the devil is doing is you know the gen z generation gen z they say gen z generation the people the young people in between the teenagers 18 to 30 something like that instagram facebook technology uh what the companies do is if they produce a product they will produce the products keeping in mind the addictions and the requirements of the gen z generation the young people they will produce the product because as per psychology things and all those scientific things they say that if if a person in his gen z age that is in his age from 18 to 30 years old if he gets used to a product like uh, in my age of 18 to 30 years old i am getting used to this mobile phone for my whole lifetime till i grow old i will not live the, live this leave this mobile phone because in that age whatever is introduced to them whatever you are habituated to you will hold on to it till you die till you get old okay are you understanding listen to me you will see older people who are 70 years old 75 years old 80 years old they don't they don't prefer the spotify or youtube they will still listen to radio because when they were young they were habituated to those things and they still stick to it you cannot change them am i right okay they are habituated to it that is what happened with the people of israel every step they were going closer to the promised land they rebelled against moses and they said the food of egypt was better the food of egypt was better because in their young age they were habituated to the things of egypt and even they came to the border of canaan they were not able to leave the things of egypt they said we want to go back we will not fight with the canaanites we want to go back to egypt am i right even after traveling from egypt to canaan they did not they say we want egypt we want to go back that's in the bible that's in the bible my dear friends we want to go back to egypt hallelujah that is the strength of the walls in the minds of people the high things that don't want to come down highly exalted highly exalted against the lord against the word of the lord hallelujah some people can be transformed and changed to a limit but they completely they, they don't become completely new in christ why because there are high things their walls are very powerful inside their minds moses that's why god said you guys will die and a new generation will go with joshua and caleb do you understand that the operations of god because this new generation does not have strongholds in their mind i can take them they are not having habitually embedded habits or ideas they hold on to they hold on to that is the strength of the walls high things are you understanding if we attack the walls that are arguments some people will lose the arguments because because we are talking from the word of god they, they have nothing to say so they have to accept the the walls can be cracked but to destroy the wall completely you have to attack the strength of the wall the strength of the wall is high things but the bible says apostle paul says that 
my weapon that is mighty in God and I pull down strongholds. I pull down strongholds. A anointed apostle who is really an apostle at his preaching, the strongholds in the minds of people will be pulled down and you will see a transformation in the lives of people because the strongholds are pulled down. Hallelujah. Am I able to explain you? Are you understanding these things? Now, once the high things is casted down, the walls fall down. The strength and the intensity of wall is attacked. The wall will fall down. And then what the Bible says, then bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now the walls are down. The thoughts are exposed. Every thought can come to the obedience of Christ. That is deliverance. That is deliverance. That is when a person is completely delivered. You will see that person. If anyone is, who is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has gone and behold, everything has become new. For Paul to become an apostle, he had a stronghold in his mind because he says, I was from the tri tribe, I am from the tribe of Benjamin. I am the Pharisees of the Pharisees, a student of Gamaliel, learned in the law, but I threw everything to the trash can, to the garbage to gain Christ. To gain Christ, to gain Christ, I became completely new. I am no longer Saul, I am Paul. I am Paul. I am a new person. That's why he changed his name. Because he was a new personality. He was a new identity. And this new personality, this new identity he has was given to him by God himself. I am not Saul. I am Paul. I am Paul. Hallelujah. People of God, we need to throw away our achievements. We, are, we have to throw away our knowledge. We have to throw away whatever we have gained in the flesh. We have to throw it to the garbage bin in order we know Christ. We will end here with a verse and we will pray with that verse. Let us pray with that verse. And tonight I pray, O oh Lord, that every strongholds I pull down. Every strongholds I pull down. Strongholds in the minds of people, I pull it down. Arguments, Lord, contradiction, Lord, and every high thing, I pull it down in Jesus' mighty name. Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter number 3 verse number verse number 3 verse number 3 onwards for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh though I also might have confidence in the flesh if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew of the Hebrews concerning the law a Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gained to me that I have counted loss for Christ yet indeed I count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to pray tonight that everything that is counted worthy in the flesh, Everything that is counted worthy in the eyes of other men. Lord, we count it as rubbish. Yes, throw it in the rubbish. Throw it in the garbage. That you may gain Christ. And you may gain the knowledge of Christ through the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name. It's not of the flesh. It's not of, the, of your mind. But it is of God. Hallelujah. The righteousness cannot be produced by our own self. It is not righteousness. Oh Lord, we, uh, we, we tonight completely depend on you. Our heart, our mind, our eyes, our mouth, our hands, our legs, our whole being, our body, soul and spirit. We surrender to you, Lord. Oh Lord, become, become you in us, Lord. You be our heart, you be our mind, you be our eyes, our ears and every stronghold. Even as I have preached this word, Lord, 
Lord, habituated, embedded habits, Lord, habitual, embedded theologies, high things in the minds of people, Lord, walls in the mind of people, Lord, be destroyed right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pull down, I pull down, I pull down every strongholds in the mind of minds of people, Lord, people like the people of Israel who are still holding on to the idols of Egypt. Loving the things of Egypt, loving the things which are in bondage, trying, trying to be pulled by the devil back into their, into their sinful life. Lord, and it is the stronghold that is pulling them back. I break the strongholds. Hallelujah. I attack the walls and the strength of the walls to pull it down with the weapon that is not carnal but mighty in God in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let people be fully delivered, be transformed. Hallelujah, into the image of the only begotten Son of God, that is Jesus Christ. Let them become completely new in Jesus Christ. Thank you for this time. Once again, we cover all of us with the blood of Jesus Christ. And we give you all praise, honor and glory in Jesus' name. We pray and we all say, Amen.